Welcome to Muslim Apologetics Australia. In this video, I had a one-on-one -on -one debate with a person on the subject of freedom of speech. Uh, as you know, Majid Nawaz has posted a, a article in reference to um, Charlie Hebbo magazine, Attacks, Trials in Paris. Remember that 12 innocent people that were murdered by jihadists over cartoons. So here they're talking about how freedom of speech should be tolerated, how we should be allowed to insult religion, and you know we shouldn't be hostile towards people who do these sorts of things. Well, what I did was I challenged this because I wanted to show that there are inconsistencies under secularism. Uh, and so let's see the exchange that I had between myself and the secularists. Uh, so Spencer Evans wrote, no one's religion is above ridicule or insult. And I basically said, I mean, I'm not a racist, of course, but I was just using it as an example. Uh, I said, um, well, no one's skin color is above criticism either or above being ridiculed or insult. No one's sexual preference should be above ridicule and insult as well. That's what I basically said. But I accidentally, accidentally deleted my comment. Uh, but anyway, those who saw it actually replied. And they said, um, uh, David is a person that I've engaged with. And he said, likewise, uh, would mean, will likewise religion bring in skin color and sexual preference, which are things people are born as, not things they both choose to believe is a false equival equivalence and a glaring logical fallacy. So the argument here is, if you're born with it, we can't ridicule it. And I said to David, who cares if you're born in it, or perhaps you make the standard. So we make standards on freedom of speech. Now that's not exactly freedom of speech, is it? David then replied back and says, if it's something you're born with, you have no control over it, and so you should be protected from ridicule. If it's something you choose, you shouldn't be. And so I responded by saying, who cares if you can't have control over it? That's not my problem. If I find your skin color is ugly, then I should be able to ridicule it. Just as some animals are born ugly, we should be able to ridicule, the, ridicule those animals. <laughs> and so, like I said, soon as you say what can and what cannot be said means you're going against freedom of speech. So I ask, do you people really believe in free speech? Like I said, the answer is no. It's one standard for religion and another standard for yourselves. David responds back by saying, if you can't see the distinction between beliefs and things you were born with, as then there's an intellectual dishonesty here. I don't know what to do with. Don't forget to add your laughing emojis. <laughs> uh, I wrote back and said, I'm still allowed to have my freedom of speech, even if you think it's wrong, because it goes against people's natural disposition. That's what freedom of speech is supposed to be about. You don't have to agree with me. If I want to be a racist or a sexist, I can. Like you people say the same thing. If you don't like what I have to say about racism or sexism, just ignore it. I mean, that's what you say to religious people. You say, well, let us write things about religion and say and ridicule it as much as we want. If you don't like it, just don't listen to it. So again, why doesn't that my same standard apply, where if you don't like what I have to say about race, being a racist or, or sexist, then don't listen to what I have to say. It's simple. So again, use the same standard of logic. If you're going to apply one logic to yourself, then you need to accept the same logic back. David then writes back and says, I believe racism is felt abhorrent and should be eradicated. I believe, however, that the ideas should be criticized, ridiculed, and 
lampooned because this is how society evolves. I said in response, well, that means you don't believe in people to have free speech. You now sound like a religious zealot who wants to silence free speech. <laughs> and um, I've actually showed also an article, and I'll publish it below this video so you can see it for yourself. You know how they keep saying, oh, it's natural tendency, you know, homosexuality or, or your sexual preference. You know, if you're born with it, then we can't criticize it. Well, there's an Oxford study uh, I think done back in 2011, I'll put the hyperlink below this video, which actually says that um, people have a natural disposition, tendency to believe in God. So you're actually born with it. Uh, this is a study done in Oxford. Uh, and I, again, so according to that standard, Will you now say we cannot criticize or mock people's beliefs in God now that there are studies showing people have natural tendencies to believe in God? David then writes back and says, Well, I'm very happy to see society's attitude towards racism as quite distinct from the towards criticism of ideas. I guess you could crack on being a racist or a homophobe if you are. But I have a lot of faith in Western society, keenness to eliminate such attitudes, ideas, though, are fair game in my view. He then says, yes, of course, because it's still a belief and it isn't shared by everyone. The debate is still exists. God, specifically God, may or may not exist. So, And he basically also writes a response to me saying that God is still contested, the belief in God. Uh, my response to him is, well, well, uh, upon his first point um, about, he says, well, I'm very happy to see society's attitude towards racism, how he tries to, he wants racism eliminated. And I said, well, then for that reason, I can share your same view that, I find it highly offensive and abhorrent that people's feelings should be hurt in what they believe to be dear to them. Therefore, I would also like to hold the view that I wish to eradicate and close down those magazines that are provocative, that try to ridicule people's beliefs, um, because that sort of idea leads to uh, hate and hostility, which isn't good for anyone. So the same standard applies. Uh, and also in his, the, the response about, you know, how, oh, you know, uh, about God's being debatable. Uh, there are debates if being a homosexual has not natural tendencies also, and if you're really born with it. So... So just because debates exist doesn't mean we shouldn't be exempted from criticism. I'm only following your standard of logic. See, I bring up evidences that people are born to believe in God, and so you shift the goalpost saying it's up for debate. Yes, God may be up for debate, just as homosexuality is up for debate, such as, is it really moral? But what isn't up for debate is that there is strong evidence, as the Oxford suggests, that people are born to believe in God. I'm only following your logic because, again, you're saying that if someone has a natural tendency into believing in something, it makes it true. Well, homosexuality, people have a natural tendency to believe that they are gay. Again, so you're saying then we shouldn't be criticizing that. Well, again, you shouldn't be criticizing people who believe in God either because, again, that has scientific back backing that it has natural tendencies. Uh, David writes back by saying, exempted from criticism. I don't know what that means. And clearly a great deal of people don't believe in God. So that's a moot point, isn't it? The debate still exists. I guess you're right on homosexuality, but this doesn't extend to racism. Uh, okay, well, he, he reckons I'm right on homosexuality. Well, <laughs> again... If I'm right on homosexuality, uh, again, so where is the consistency here? 
Are, are, we, are you going to now advocate to ridicule homosexuals? So he actually now agrees with me on, on the point of homosexuality. Um, but of course, not on racism. Uh, I said, and I said, okay, so my response to him when he says, if someone finds your beliefs, okay, so he wrote in another response, he said, and what if someone finds your beliefs, holy book, holy men, hateful, hostile, prejudice, see the issue, ideas should be challenged, that's how society evolves. And I said in a response, sure, you can have an opinion and there is no problem in challenging those opinions through discourse. But then there is a difference when you want to mock and ridicule in the most vilest fashions, in a way where you yourself also create hate of the other. We can do everything in a more civil term. Instead, the West uses bullying and ridiculing techniques, which isn't healthy. If I disagree with Christianity, I don't go ridiculing it by drawing a painting of Jesus using paint mixed with human urine, which actually happened here in Australia, where a group of atheists did that. This approach is not healthy in, a, in any civil dialogue. So when you people accuse the other of hostility and hate, such as religion being hateful, you facil facilitate your own hate and hostility by resorting to those measures. Again, I'm not against free speech, so, as so long as it's not said or done in a way which can cause hostility and hate, I'm sure most civil people can agree with that. Also, who cares if a lot of um, people believe in... Um, don't believe in God, as you suggest. The majority do, and also many people don't believe in homosexuality too. So that's that again is not an argument. Well, the moral argument for homosexuality anyway. And how did uh, David writes back and says, how did Christians respond to the Jesus painting in Australia with automatic weapons? He says, don't believe in homosexuality. I can assure it does happen. He says, which God? How do you know which God to believe in? So he's raised a few points here. My response to him is uh, about his Jesus painting in Australia with automatic weapons. Uh, how did the Christians respond to this? Did they respond with automatic weapons? And my response is, if they did, would you agree, would you agree that those paintings did incite violence and hate? And I said, can I ask... If I urinated on a British flag, would that incite hate and violence? Because if something is forbidden because it causes hate and violence, then, you know, then my actions can cause hate and violence too, but I'm, I'm pretty sure you wouldn't have a problem with me doing such thing. Again, and if you do, then again, you're not tolerant, you're not living up to freedom of speech and freedom rights. But I'm pretty sure if I did that, you'll ridicule me and say, oh, look at this person, look how intolerant he is. So when it affects them, it becomes intolerant. But, you know, that's another standard. He says, no, I'd say they were ridiculing religion, challenging ideas, and if someone really believes in that religion and that they should have the creator of the universe on their side, they wouldn't care. I wouldn't. Now, please be patient. Wait till we get to the end and where we nail this point home. About the existence of God, he says basically he doesn't believe in the existence of God. There's no proof to the existence of God. And therefore, he should be ridiculed. And my response to him is, I don't believe in homosexuality being morally justifiable. So then why can't I ridicule and mock it? just as you think you can mock something that you don't believe in, it exists also. Or you don't believe it. Uh, David writes back and says, well, until there is scientific proof that it is perfectly natural, which I'd say is true, given that it is observed in many other animals in nature, I guess you can. I guess a debate exists as to whether or not it is a choice, but I already said that you were right on homosexuality. That given said, racism, where there is zero choice, however, it's not fair game, religion is very much different. 
I said to him in a response, so uh, urinating on something challenges ideas, really challenging ideas. Okay, so if I urinate on something like a, a national flag or even on a gravestone of your national hero like past fallen heroes, then this action of mine should also be tolerated. Because basically, you know, if it's if it's if if we're talking about toleration, because his argument was, well, you shouldn't be urinating on something that isn't yours. It's not your property. Okay, what if I build it myself and replicate it myself and and use it as an example? You still find that offensive. Uh, and his argument was that if there is hundred percent proof that God exists. Until we can prove 100% and that God exists, then they will stop ridiculing. And this was my response. And this is where we brought the point home, where we nailed the point home. I said in a response, so you're saying that if there was scientific evidence that God exists and it was 100% true, are you suggesting you will not mock people's God? You would still mock people's God, saying he's barbaric, and still draw pictures ridiculing him, wouldn't you? Uh, and he says, in a response, And if there was proof of God, I'd be a bit silly to mock him, wouldn't I? And I said in a response, Because uh, he said um, he'd be silly to mock God if, if he found out it was true and it does exist. I say, why? Why wouldn't you if you think this God condones murder or pedophilia, for example? I'm sure you would mock it, wouldn't you? I mean, that's what you guys are doing right now. I mean, you have no problem mocking God now and you don't think it's silly even though you don't have 100% proof, he for sure doesn't exist. And yet, you still have no issue risking it and still advocate mocking God. Even though you, have, you don't have 100% confirmed evidence that God doesn't exist, and yet you still ridicule and mock him. And you don't think that's silly? In addition... What if I build a replication of these gravestones and start urinating on it of your past fall, fallen heroes and, and, and diggers in war? What if I start drawing pictures of September 11 victims falling out of buildings and my, making a mockery out of it? I mean, that won't be offensive. That won't be hateful that I'm mocking the death of people's lives and making their misery a joke for me because I disagree with the West. I disagree with unbelievers and who they are because they're non-Muslim. I disagree with them. So it gives me now a right to mock them. Uh, David writes back and says, if you went to all the trouble to do that, I'd say good luck to you. Would all seem rather pointless to me. Now, I find 9-11 jokes repulsive, but I've never advocated them being banned. As to your second point, if there's proof of your specific God who created the universe and can destroy me in a second, it would be silly to mock him, her, wouldn't it? And I replied and said, Really? So you wouldn't protest against Charlie Hebbo mocking September 11 victims? Really? Well, that's sad. So you would do anything to silence racism, but you won't try and silence mockery, cartoons that ridicule people who had no control about the way in which they died in September 11. For your second point, you say it to be silly to mock God because he could destroy you if he obviously exists. And there's 100% proof of that. Again, I've already answered that. You have no problem mocking God now, even though you don't have absolute proof that he does not exist. Don't you find it silly also that you're condoning mockery of God when he could exist? If he 
could exist, isn't it then sensible not to indulge in it? For the same reason you may get destroyed if it happens to be true. So notice we've addressed all those points, all those points of contention. You know, they bring up, oh, you know, if it's based on fairy tales, if there isn't proof for it, then we can mock it. Well, what if there is proof? Or what if it is true? Would you still mock it? Would you still risk it? And he obviously says that if it was true, then he wouldn't risk it. Well, how do you, again, how do you know it's not true? And if it is true, isn't it silly in doing so? And so why would you risk it? So his whole argument, their whole Western philosophical argument is, if it is true, then we shouldn't mock it. Again, that doesn't, that doesn't make sense because there's still a lot of things even... That, we, that are scientifically true, or it might be morally true, there may be moral arguments for it. It doesn't mean that you agree to every single moral argument. You know, it may be true to some people, and it might have scientific backing. It doesn't mean you don't have to mock that opinion or ridicule that opinion, just like you may accept criticism based on your own opinion and your thought process on, on certain moral issues. So this notion that if it is true, then it is exempted from mockery or ridicule, it, it doesn't make any sense because they don't believe it themselves as a standard of argument. Um, so he said basically... I wouldn't protest Charlie Hebdo making such cartoons. That'd be a sad excuse for humanity, and I wouldn't waste my time on them. I'd rely on society to outset them by not buying their paper. And you're right. There is no proof that Allah, since I imagine this is particular God you are referring to, doesn't exist. But there is no proof that leprechauns don't exist. People should be free to mock them both. If you have the creator of the entire universe on your side, it doesn't matter what... It, Anyone says and does to all get up to the about some cartoons that shows lack of faith. And I said, uh, in a response, what if the whole world was mocking September 11th? Because, you know, they try to make it sound like, oh, it's just Charlie Hebdo, it's just a small little organization. What? So let's you now extend it. What if the whole world was mocking September 11? Say 50% of the global population. So basically, it's much bigger media corporation. What if the whole world banded together and started ridiculing the lives of 9-11 victims? Are you saying you wouldn't join protests to advocate censorship? Shouldn't we try and stop hate in the world and try and stop people for, for freely being toxic to others? Is that not the world? Is that the world that you want to live you know, a toxic world? Is that what you want to be a part of? Just imagine we did that to racists. Imagine we allowed racists to just go about their own business and grow in number and to point where it to a point where it's just out of control. I bet you would wish to protest against it from the very get-go and demand change. And then about his point about God and, you know, I said, you didn't answer the question. You said it'd be silly to ridicule God if it existed. Mythical creatures may not exist like leprechauns. Does not mean God may not exist. That's a false equivocation. I'm not only going by I'm I'm only going by the standard of your your logic. You said it to be silly to mock something that we can test to exist and there's hundred percent truth. That logic doesn't seem reasonable because, like I said, he could be true, yet you're still risking it. So your logic about being afraid of being destroyed doesn't add up because you're already destroyed by joining in the mockery of God from the very get-go. Also, if God is true and he is evil, shouldn't you die fighting against something that's evil? And here's another point. And here's another point, and this, this is probably the one that brings a nail home. If Muslims are a superpower, 
Would you also stop ridiculing their prophet because that would be silly? That would destroy you? Just as if God existed and he would destroy you? <laughs> so would that now stop you? So would that be a logical response? So if Muslims were in greater, bigger number, that would then stop you from writing and ridiculing Muslims in Islam? Hmm. Uh, he says, I don't think you're going to agree. I think Charlie Hebdo should be free to criticize, mock and defame any set of ideas, including religion and its figureheads, prophet. If you get angry at their criticism, it shows you're weak. And that's just, your, that's a weakness of your faith. Yeah. And I said, okay, so your argument is we must be weak for not allowing criticism. This has nothing to do with weakness. Again, we do allow discussion you know but the way you're talking about vile drawing funny pictures tying a bomb to his head you know making him look like a pedophile doing all these ridiculous things this is hate this has nothing to do with freedom of speech or criticism this is vile hatred uh and Again, this has got nothing to do with weakness. This has got to do with respect. Just as you wouldn't want something written negative, unfactual things about your own family to, to defame them in order to ridicule and mock them, we Muslims also hold our prophet and love him more than our own selves and see him as one of our members of our family. We believe that following our prophet leads to salvation and those who lead leads others away from our prophet are advocating harm. And so that's not acceptable as free speech. That is the devil's speech that leads the peoples to hellfire. So just as you may want racism even forcefully removed because it leads to violence, well, so does the media platforms who hinder people away from my religion, which causes destruction, death for them in the afterlife. So again, you try and stop racism because it leads to destruction of people. Well, I'm going to then support Charlie Hebdo to be closed down because it ridicules my prophet, which actually leads to destruction of people following that that depiction of the prophet that they make. And so people get misled and they go to hellfire. So again, I'm going to censor that too then. Well, there you go. So my argument is now just as strong as your argument. So do we now censor that? Do we close it down? Because they're ridiculing and misguiding others, which leads to destruction and harm. Because if you're thinking about human harm, then we have the position that indulging in such a thing and polluting the, the people's minds and moving them away from Islam is actually harming human beings as well. There you go. Uh, so he asked the questions, can, can Muhammad be harmed by criticism or mockery? And I said, uh, explain yourself. He says, well, if he can't be harmed, because I said, no, he obviously can't be harmed. He said in response, well, if he can't be harmed by it, why are you bothered by it? My response is, I think I've answered this. Drawing and ridiculing picture of the prophet is not harming him. It's harming rather his reputation in representing that religion. If what they write and draw is misrepresenting his faith in a negative way, so the greater harm is the misguidance of others, which is the greater harm done on the human race who get misled by it, which have consequences. This is why even in a majority Muslim nation, I don't agree to absolute free speech. Um, you know, for example, when a Christian wants to openly promote his Bible and call people to misguidance, uh, he can do it in the privacy of his own home. But if he's doing it publicly uh, in mass gatherings, then, then this is not right. And just as secularists don't allow me or Muslims to come on their international programs broadcasting to six, nine, six to nine million people, uh, you know, where I start... Uh, preaching them Islam, you know, the West aren't going to like this. They're going to silence me because they're going to think that I'm, uh, you know, calling people to misguidance, evil, barbarism, and, 
and oppression and all that sort of stuff. So they're not going to accept it. Um, and so, yeah, I know I've done a video on this. I'll put a hyperlink below this video so you can go and see it for yourself. He says in a response, I have to ask how weak is religion if cartoons can affect it? So now he from Muhammad, he's now gone to religion. Um, and I said, uh, religion is not weak. Human beings are weak and are susceptible to brainwashing and manipulation. Therefore, censorship helps those people think for themselves instead of being fed and indoctrinated nonsense. So my religion is strong and so it helps the weak who are humans that can fall victim to the lies and propaganda spread by those false images and stories spread in these papers. So yes, we answered his question. He said, how weak is religion? And again, we said religion is not weak. Human beings are weak and are susceptible to brainwashing and manipulation. Um, and that's why uh, these venues need to be closed down. Um, just like gambling and alcohol. You know, I believe that alcohol shouldn't be allowed because, you know, people misuse it just as drugs are not allowed. And we, we censor and close these things down because it can ultimately uh, bring the destruction out of people. Uh, David writes back and he says, um, censorship helps those people think for themselves. It's absolutely the opposite. Assuming people will just blindly follow anything they see without researching it properly for themselves is really painting them as brain dead sheep. But to only allow them to see certain opinions, jokes, cartoons, whatever the night. And my response is, actually, you are fooling yourself. Most people don't care about religion, especially in the West, and so they don't get interested in investigating something that's already been portrayed to them as being evil and abhorrent. Not in all cases, but generally. I've spoken to many converts, and they have said, because there is so much negativity in the papers about Islam, it was the least religion they wanted to spend time in researching. Also, no... One is suggesting blindly follow religion. We call to research it for yourself. Censorship is absolutely necessary because just as ISIS material brainwashes people to join their ranks and commit acts of terrorism, we close down all their jihadi online material. We do this because it gives more safety and security. Similarly, closing down these places that write negative about God also misguides people and ultimately harms them. I'm done with this point. And so I said, anyway, that was a great discussion. Thank you again for keeping it civil. And again, I apologize for any emojis. I really enjoyed this discussion. We don't have to agree. We can also agree to disagree. Uh, David then writes back and says, I have to ask. Uh, so he basically wants one more question answered. Uh, he says, I have to ask if if the shooters attacked the office of Charlie Hedbo, would you blame? I think this is where the crux of the discussion lies. Oh, so he's basically asking whether I condone um, people going in there and shooting up Charlie Hedbo. Um, and so my response is... Okay, I'm only answering this last question and I'm done. <laughs> um, my response to that, of course, is no. I do not advocate random civilians to go in and start shooting people at Charlie Hedbo. That would uh, obviously be an act of terrorism when we condone terrorism. Uh, everything should be done by the law. So, for example, if France was under an Islamic state and an Islamic judicial system and Charlie Hebbo was operating, I would support Muslim police officers going there to forcefully shut it down like any law enforcement agency would do so for going against the law of the land. If they resist and become violent against the police, Muslim police officers, only then, according to the law, can force be used, but proportionate force can be used um, 
against those who are not complying with the authorities. I can't really find the comment, but David basically says, um, uh, unlike all the other Muslims, he's thankful enough to see that a Muslim uh, does not condone um, you know, the killings of Charlie Hedbo and things like that, um, you know, what we saw, the shootings. Um, and so he was pretty happy with that. But I can't actually find the comment. I don't know where it's gone. And so I basically said, have a good night. Um, it was a wonderful discussion. In fact, I really, really appreciate it. And I'm grateful that people like you exist where we can have honest discussions about things in respectful terms. So that's it, folks. Uh, and by the way, I'll put a hyperlink below this video and read it on my blog and you'll see where we actually show, because I didn't really get into a lot of the double standards, because um, there are much more double standards. Um, you know, I've presented an article. You can read that and you can see for yourself where I show um, how certain media platforms in Australia um, fired particular workers because they were trying to express their freedom of speech against Israel. Um, and they made some comments discrediting Netanyahu at the time for killing Palestinians. And they actually drew pictures and cartoons making him look like a terrorist and this was very offensive and so what the Australian media network did was they actually fired this individual um, and they did that because it offended Israel and the Jews uh, and no uh, people on the right didn't come out and say oh you're impinging against freedom of speech and if this is wrong to do this no they they basically said you know we shouldn't be you know this is anti being anti-semitic you shouldn't be anti-semitic so they fired him i mean imagine 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 if that person said something like um I don't know, uh, President Erdogan is a terrorist and they drew a, a, a funny picture of uh, uh, Erdogan and they put an ISIS flag on him like they do in some of those cartoons and that newspaper published that and said he condones terrorism. Uh, and then imagine the same media network fired him for doing that. The whole country of Australia would be up in arms, in roar to say you're oppressing freedom of rights and freedom of speech. Um, and I think his name was Michael, uh, not too, I, I can't remember his name, but it's on my article. You can go and check it yourself. I'll put the hyperlink below this here and you can see it for yourself.